Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Well guys, I've been working on the Monarch 16 inch lathe restoration and as I was getting my saddle ready to start scraping in and uh, getting things ready, I realized I had a problem. And uh, this video is gonna be about hopefully trying to fix this problem. So let me kind of zoom you in here, show you what's going on, and uh, we're gonna tell you the plan of action on how we're gonna try to solve this problem. So this is a saddle of the lathe, and of course this is sitting upside down right now. This is your ways on the lathe that this rides on. There's a flat back here on the back that this rides on. And of course the apron uh, comes up and sits right here, the front control panel that has all the, the cranks and levers and all that on it. Um, we had worked on this previously. Uh, we've actually already in an earlier video, we went in here and milled this out, put a new turkite in here to get this ready to go back in, building up these ways that were worn in here. But uh, as I was working on this the other day, I realized a problem, and uh, it has to do with the lubrication system on this uh, whole apron, the whole uh, uh, saddle, apron, everything. So if you see here, there's a distribution block here, there's another distribution block here. This is basically that we'll put oil in different places. So oil comes in, there's a reservoir up in the apron, up in the front. Um, that pumps oil as this machine is being moved. Uh, it pumps oil and it then goes through these lines and it distributes oil in strategic places all around to keep things properly lubricated. It keeps the ways lubricated, it keeps all the gears lubricated, uh, et cetera. And that's what these uh, distribution blocks and lines are all about. Now the way the oil gets there is in the apron there's a pump and there's actually a line, a just a piece of a, a tubing that goes into this hole in the front and the bottom of the apron. And there's a hole that's drilled down through the casting. There's another hole that's drilled through the front that intersects it. It's plugged up here on the front. And it comes across to the inside to this little uh, uh, elbow. So basically the oil comes in here, it goes through a passage inside over here up into this and then another tube goes from here to here. The problem that we've got is that somebody previous to me um, and I don't know why or how they did this, but there is the, 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 the hole that goes through here down to the bottom is plugged. Uh, it looks to me like what happened is, is they were trying to drill it out and a drill bit broke down in the hole. Whoopee, uh, not fun. Uh, not exactly something that I wanna have to deal with but I need to deal with it. Uh, this whole apron and lathe has not been lubricated in quite some time, and I saw that very evident, and you guys haven't seen the video yet. Uh, it'll be coming up soon, but uh, all my bearings in the, in the apron are just ruined because they were not lubricated, because this hole is plugged up and there's no oil uh, going through this whole saddle. Uh, which is very disturbing. So my plan is, is I've got this thing over here on the milling machine and we're gonna try to do some surgery down this hole and see if we can get lucky and get that drill bit out. Let's talk about the setup here. Um, I've got the saddle clamped down to the table. This is the same setup we did when we actually milled out the uh, ways in here. Uh, just clamped it down flat so that everything's running true. Um, I didn't go this time worry about getting everything lined up perfectly because I'm just gonna be drilling a hole. I just made sure everything's square to the table, which it is. And uh, when we did that before too, because everything is out here, it's, it's clamped in the middle and this is so far out and I'm gonna be pushing down on it. I put these bars back in here and uh, I made these before and basically this is just a bar strapped to the table and there's a um, bolt that comes up through this that is actually pushing into the bottom here so that I have support out on these ends. So that's gonna keep this from rocking as I'm, I'm working on it. Uh, as far as, uh, well, first off too, I had to, bring the whole head out because this is sticking so far out. Uh, but that's the nice thing about these mill machines is I just loosen some bolts up and I just pull the whole head out. So it's out a little bit farther than it normally is by probably eight or nine inches. Uh, and then this is centered up on this hole and I basically just took a drill bit that will just fit down inside this hole. And uh, there we go. And I just use that. I, I put that in here and I just kind of 
move my table around until I had it lined up where it's, it's true. So it's, you know, it's pretty darn close to being on center, uh, which is going to be good enough for what I'm doing. Now, I don't know what's down in here. Uh, I'm assuming it's a drill bit. Uh, that's what makes most sense. I'm hoping that it's something that's soft. Uh, but I'm going to anticipate that it's high-speed steel that's down in there. So I'm going to be working with carbide. I've actually got a, car, a couple of carbide end mills. And my plan here is, first I'm going to take a bigger diameter carbide drill bit, and I'm just going to kind of go down. It's a center drilling drill bit, so it, it will cut all the way to the middle. And we're going to get a good flat uh, on that thing, because right now it's broke off. It's just rough in there. So we're going to get a good flat, and then I've got another smaller carbide uh, in mill that has a radius, it's a nose, it's a, a round bit on the front rather than having the, the square. And uh, I was talking with Bruce with him. Uh, Bruce is a uh, uh, YouTube machinist down in Australia. And one of the things he specializes is getting stuff out, really stuck things. And I talked to him about it. And he suggested using a, a ball nose carbide end mill uh, because he said you're less likely to break the corners on that radius than you are the sharp corner uh, on a square when you're drilling that high speed steel. So it's a smaller diameter. I'm going to try to get a hole down in there and uh, then we're just going to see what what happens. Uh, you know, if nothing else, hopefully I can drill all the way through that drill bit. Maybe I can back that drill bit out. I don't know. We're just going to have to get in there and see how it goes. Uh, I don't know how this is going to go. I'm a little bit nervous about it, but hey, we got to try something. So this is going to be attempt one. Uh, and we'll see if we have to go to plan B, C, and D. Hopefully we won't. Let's uh, get going. All right, again, so we've just got a uh, carbide end mill. It's a four flute. Uh, it's got drills all the way down or mills all the way to the center. It's a square flat bottom, and we're going to ease this down in here. This is not fun because I can't even hardly see down in this hole where I'm working. I know you guys can't either. Uh, I'm working a little bit on the blind side. And I'm just raising the table up. Feels like I'm cutting. All right, I see metal coming out. So I assume I'm cutting. All right, I'm gonna back out of here and just see what we got. After inspecting this, uh, we did get a good flat bottom down in here. It actually is milled down probably about an eighth of an inch below the surface, which is perfectly fine. Uh, I took a picture and I'll show you the picture I took shooting down through there. Hopefully you can see it. And uh, I'm trying to, you can kind of see the outline of whatever's down in there. And I'm, I'm trying to decide if that's a drill bit or a tap. There's no reason they would have run a tap in there. So again, I'm assuming it's a drill bit. So, uh, but the good news is, is that the carbide seemed to cut it just fine. Didn't have any problems there. Uh, what I'm gonna do now, tell you what, I'm gonna raise my table up before I do anything else. Next step here is I've got this, uh, this is an eighth inch diameter carbide end mill, ball end mill. And uh, I'm gonna lower it down in here until it's just from touching the bottom. And we're gonna go down in here and hopefully get a hole at least started. Um, anyway, we're gonna see how this goes. Again, I'm gonna just use my raise up on my table. Nice and slow and easy. I see chips coming out. Seems to be cutting pretty darn good right now. See, I'm gonna squirt a little oil down in there. And I'm just gonna very slowly raise the table up on this. Give you an idea of my feed rate. 
1,000th, 2,000th, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'm just slowly raising the table up here. I'm trying not to get in a big hurry. Starting to hear a little bit down in there. Doesn't sound bad, it's a little rubbing sound. I think I'm just gonna go as deep as it'll let me go. coming out. I'm going to pull my table out and take a look and see what we got. Well guys, I think I'm going to call this success. Uh, I was not, I did not actually remove that broken piece in there, but I have ultimately um, succeeded in my end goal, which is to get a clear passage. So we were able to drill through that drill bit and get a passage down through there. So here's a piece of wire. Number one, you can see this little plug right here. This is the cross passage that goes across. This is plugged with a piece of brass. I'm gonna drop a wire down through here and you can see it's going all the way down to the bottom of that plug. So we're good there and uh, I was able to Take my blowgun here, squirt here, and I'm feeling the air come up through here. It's a clear passage now. My oil will flow as it needs to. So uh, there's still a bit of that drill bit in there, uh, but I'm not gonna worry about it. We're not gonna worry about trying to get it out. It's, it's in there, it's not causing any problems, it's not going anywhere. We have a clear passage, that's all we need for our oil. So uh, success. And uh, quite honestly, that was a heck of a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Uh, and thank you to Bruce Witham for suggesting the uh, uh, carbide round nose end mill trick uh, that seemed to do the trick. So thanks a lot. As long as I've got the um, apron here up in the mill, I got one more thing we need to do related to these oil ports. So we've already talked about how there's passages drilled through the casting here to deliver oil in, in uh, strategic places. We have these little hoses coming out in various places. Um, there's also holes that go down to some passageways in these ways. And uh, I've actually got them marked here. And before we put the turkite in here to build up the wear, uh, I marked where these were uh, so that I could come back and find them. And I can also tell because here on the end, uh, there's the plugs uh, that we talked about before where those holes were drilled all the way through. So there's a hole that basically uh, comes through the casting. And this there's a pipe that goes down right here. There's one that goes down right here. It goes into a hole that's drilled horizontally. It comes out here and here in, in the casting. And uh, the purpose of that is to allow for oil to uh, flow through uh, on these, onto these ways and lubricate the ways. Uh, but when I put the turkite in, we covered them up and I need to expose them again. So we're just going to take a ball end mill, a uh, little bit larger diameter one, and I'm basically just going to come in here and open these holes up uh, so that the oil can get there. There's also some oil grooves that we'll have to put into the turkite later on uh, that will de deliver the oil. It's a little zigzag fashion that comes off of here, but I got one on either side here. There's one here. We got our two, two here two here, one uh, on this piece, and there's two holes back here on the back, and uh, that's out of the camera frame. But anyway, I've got, what is that, four, five, seven holes I'm gonna drill in here using this uh, um, round nose end mill. And uh, we're just gonna do this. I'm just gonna come in here and uh, raise the table up. Let me get a little more speed going there. It'll go down through that turkite and uh, 
down into that hole. I'm not exactly sure how deep I'm going to have to go here, so I'm going to have to get in here and look. I'm going to bring you in here and kind of give you an update on where we're at. I've been doing a lot of stuff here, mostly off camera. Good news is I got all my holes opened up now. Everything's good there. Um, I've, I've got clear passages through all of them. These are blowing air through. The one back here is blowing air through. Um, I haven't got any air to blow through this one yet. Um, my challenge right now is, is I think that the lines, most of the lines coming from this uh, distribution block that was up here um, are just full of crud. Uh, and I've been trying to blow air through them and haven't really been successful, mainly because I just don't have a good seal. So um, I've been able to get oil out of all the ones on this distribution block or air. I, was, I blew it through here and I'm getting air through all these. So this one's clear and the, the one that goes up to here even though my line looks like it's kinked, it's actually um, got air going through this one. And I was, I was blowing air from this, in, in the main input here, out this hole. So I know it was going through the distribution block. Uh, but I've got this hole, this one's covered up right here right now, and then there's a line that comes through here, comes back up and goes in here that does these two holes. Those are all stopped. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a break and I'm going to rig up uh, where I can actually uh, direct connect to these fittings here, a fitting that I can pump. Probably I'm going to try to get me a little oil pump. I may even use this, like this little Eagle pump here and where I can just pump oil through these and try to flush these lines out and get some pressure behind them. Uh, and try to just blow them out. Uh, I think if I can get some hydraulic pressure on there with the uh, oil that I can get them all clean again. Uh, but it's just, I gotta, I gotta do some rigging here. So, but anyway, I just wanna kinda give you a quick update of where we were. Uh, that's gonna be all I can do on this today. And I'm gonna go ahead and get this video posted and up for you guys. Uh, but we are making progress. Um, Man, these little lines, these things are a pain in the rear. I'd hate to be the guy that had to plumb these things all day long. And uh, I'm hoping I can get everything put back in here all right. But making progress is just slow. So that's going to be a wrap on this one, guys. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. We're going to get this uh, apron salvaged. I was really worried about getting this hole punched down through here, but that actually was pretty easy. Uh, getting these holes opened up wasn't near as bad as I thought it was going to be either. Thank goodness I marked them well so I could, I could navigate to them and find them pretty easily. Uh, now I just got to get these oil lines opened up and uh, get it where the, we'll get proper lubrication back on this saddle and on my apron. Uh, and I think with that, it's going to last a lot longer than it did before, particularly all my bearings and stuff that are bad in the, uh, in the, in the apron. Uh, it's mainly because of just poor lubrication and we're going to fix that. So with that, that'll be a wrap guys. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time.